Welcome to our homestead and welcome to our garden. Today I wanted to talk about the top mistakes that gardeners make. Mistakes that I've made before, mistakes I'm still making, and how I overcame them. And hopefully this video will help you alleviate any headaches that come with gardening and save you a little money in the end. Let's get going. So the very first and probably the biggest mistake that is made is location of your garden. Now when thinking about location, you have to think about two different things. One is the distance from your house, because as the saying goes, out of sight, out of mind. And if your garden isn't right in front of you all the time, you may make some of these other mistakes that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. The second factor in location is, of course, sun exposure. Now, depending on where you live, that might be a little bit different. Down here in Texas, I do want some shade on my garden because it gets so intensely hot. And that's a mistake that I made early on in placing this garden where it is. Now, there weren't too many places on my property where I could have put this, but this is in the absolute sunniest location. That's great for a lot of things, but not so good when it's 100 degrees and the sun is burning down for months on end. So the way that I overcame that was to use shade cloth. If you haven't seen my video on how I created the shading system, mostly for my tomatoes, but it really covers half the garden, click on the video on the top of the screen. For so many years before I put in the shading system, I was just struggling with keeping things alive in this hot Texas heat. But if you live, say, up in the Northwest, it's gonna be cloudy a lot of the time. So you need to put yours in the sunniest spot possible. It's all going to be dependent on your growing zone and what you are trying to grow in your garden. There is another very important aspect to location that needs to be thought about as well, and that's elevation. If you've got a garden that sits down in an area that retains a lot of moisture, and you have a soil that retains a lot of moisture, your plants are going to be overwatered and drowned. They need oxygen in the soil as well. So the soil needs to be extremely well draining. But that's if that's at a bottom of a depression, then you're not going to get proper growth down there and they will probably all die. Now that's also going to be the same for a very high spot on your property. If you've got well draining soil elevated, then all of your moisture is going to drain out and your plants are going to die for lack of water. So make sure you look at all of that when placing the position of your garden. Now here is another mistake that I've made is almost exclusively relying on drip watering. Now drip irrigation is a blessing, especially down here in Texas where we get a lot of drought. But the mistake I made relying on it is when I direct sow seeds, I relied on the drip irrigation system. And that does not water evenly over the soil, especially for seed that you just planted just a hair under the top of the soil like carrots. So I will be adding some overhead watering in the future and I know that's a mistake that I've made and I'm going to try and remedy it soon. Now here's a mistake I make every single year and I can't seem to fix it. I don't know, it's this thing inside of me where I do not want to waste anything. So as you can see behind me, I've got broccoli growing right here, but this is from last year. Most cruciferous vegetables are biennials and this is putting out, this is Calabrese broccoli, so it's got these little broccoli heads on it and I don't want to pull them out. This bed is supposed to get arugula and lettuce and those need to get planted really soon here in Texas. I think I just need to pull them out and deal with it. And that's the same thing over here in this bed. I cannot remember what I'm planting here, but I had Swiss chard here last year. I thought the chard was completely dead, but it's coming back from the roots. I'm having a tough time pulling these out. And of course, right here next to it, this Chinese cabbage, we are still eating, but I don't want to yank this out yet either, but I'm going to have to. Even the lone beet over here, I need to get it out. And the arugula also. Now this is a big one for me, is actually amending my soil properly and building my soil. It's so important to feed your soil and get it healthy. And you can do that while things are growing in it, but I've had a difficult time in between my crops actually getting enough onto the soil to build it for that next crop to come in. This bed was being rested and rehabbed. I did throw a thin layer of compost on the top of it, but it's mostly very sandy underneath the soil and it really needs more organic matter in it. And that brings me to one of my next points, which is succession planting. For good soil health, you should have 
the soil covered all the time in something growing. And that is, if you're gonna keep the soil covered constantly, you need to learn how to succession plant. And I haven't been able to do that very well at all. I will have beds that lay fallow without anything growing in them. Now, I really should put a cover crop on them, and I just started to do that within the last year and a half to two years, and it has helped. But letting something lay there without anything growing in it is usually not a good thing. Now we all get those beautiful seed catalogs from all the different seed companies and we want to go through those and buy everything in there and buy 200 different varieties of tomatoes. Well, in reality, not all of them are going to grow in your area and you need to edit yourself out. I know when I started, I bought like 15 different varieties of tomato. Now I've got it down to four to five. Two paste tomatoes, two slicing tomatoes, and one cherry tomato. And it takes a lot of room to grow just that many tomatoes. You'd be surprised. And that leads me to the next mistake that is often made, giving your plants enough space. So often we have a beautiful garden bed and we start a lot of seedlings and we want to plant absolutely everything in there and not waste anything. And I totally understand that. And that's a mistake that I've made too. But plant spacing is important, especially for fruits and vegetables that have a really large root system like tomatoes or things like squashes. You might want to plant a lot of squash in there, but in reality, you need about 16 square feet per squash plant. And for melons, it's even bigger. You'll be tempted to want to let 20 different melon plants grow in one small area, but they are going to crowd each other out and they're not going to produce well. So you'll have to pare that back as much as you possibly can. And I recently talked about that in a video on how to plant and replant strawberries. They need to be thinned out every year. They have fairly big root systems for the size of plant that they are, and they need those extra nutrients. Now here's a common mistake I used to make all the time, and that's starting too few seedlings for your garden. When you transplant these out into your garden, there is going to be an attrition rate. So some of them are going to die. Some are gonna get eaten by bugs, some are gonna get eaten by birds, some are just gonna be shocked from the transplant and they will die. So what I do now is what's called holding back. I've got a lot of, say, broccoli over here. I'm gonna hold back half of those broccoli, plant some out, and then wait maybe a week to two weeks to see if anything out in the garden has died off. And then I can plant these out there. I have backups for that space. Now, if you have a lot of seedlings, you're going to be tempted to plant absolutely everything out there. And then that comes down to that spacing, spacing issue as well. You wanna hold some back in the house and wait just a little while. And if everything is looking great in the garden and growing well, then the rest of your seedlings can go to your chickens. So this is gonna be true also if you plant multiple seeds in one pot. You're gonna to wanna to take the strongest plant out of this and plant that in the garden. And if that means pinching this off and killing this, this seedling, then so be it. If you haven't seen my video on starting seeds for this year, click on the link at the top of the screen. And also in that video, I cover a beautiful computer program called Seed Time. Seed Time is an online garden planner and it helps you plan seed starting times, transplanting times, bed preparation times, and a whole variety of other things. It's incredibly helpful and it's helped us out a lot this year and saving me a ton of time. Now Seed Time is offering anybody who signs up for the free account $5 in free seeds. Click on the link in the description below to get your free seeds. Now, one of the last big mistakes that everybody makes, and so do I, and I still make it to this day and I haven't corrected it yet, is growing food that is appropriate for your area. Additionally, that works for the zone and time of year that you wanna plant them in. Here's case in point behind me, is this broccoli. Now this did do well in our greenhouse during this winter, but I'm trying to plant spring broccoli again, and it gets really hot really quick here in Texas, and it usually just bolts out before I can get a broccoli head. This one behind me is from the fall, and it's already starting to flower out right now. But to really find out what grows well in your area, you wanna check with your local college ag office and also your neighbors. They are a great resource for knowing and understanding what grows well in your area. For us here in Texas in zone 8B, sweet potatoes, peanuts, watermelon, and things like that, 
onions, tomatoes, they all grow very well. But stuff like this broccoli is a struggle. I'm gonna be working on a video this summer about how to grow cool weather vegetables in a hot area. And I hope it works. It works for my friends in Oklahoma and I'm gonna try their method. I hope that we've provided some good information for you today and some solutions as well. Happy gardening, and if you have any questions, leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go click on this series of videos right here, which shows you how we built this greenhouse by ourselves. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.